this is going to be video number five in the series I'm making about aggressive atheism and its attacks on Christianity and Christian channels. So the topic for this video is going to be their attack that says the Bible is not true because it was written by men and not God. And my re first retort to that is that God is the one who wrote the Bible using men as vessels. I'm thinking of like 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, that quote unquote, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, my first thought that I want to fill in regarding that is the prophecies. These quote unquote men wrote prophecies that came true thousands of years later. How could they have known that if they weren't divinely inspired? So atheists, you have to explain how they were able to predict the future multiple times thousands of years ago with 100% accuracy. Number two, scriptures form together like a well-planned jigsaw puzzle that fit together perfectly. How can more than 40 different men be so consistent where Old and New Testaments match up over thousands of years? For example, the story of Abraham predicts the crucifixion of Christ, whereby Abraham was told to sacrifice his own child. There's more to it. I just don't want to bog everyone down with the details. That same story is reflected in the crucifixion of Christ, where God sacrificed his own child. And then if you look at Moses, there's so many different parallels between the stories of Moses and the stories of Christ. So they match together like bookends. How would they have known that? thousands of years before those events even happened, unless they were divinely inspired. Number three, they say anyone can pretend that they are inspired by God and add on to the Bible or write their own Bible, etc. Like anyone can just forge a Bible and make their own Bibles up and then everyone's going to believe it is truth or just add their own books onto the Bible because everyone could just write like God can. Um, and my answer to that is people have already tried to do that. It didn't work. For example, the Book of Mormon um, is someone trying to emulate words and stories that they thought sounded superficially like something you would find in the Bible. Like, for example, call, like instead of Kedonite, you could call someone uh, Gubanite or something, and then just make up your own you know, goofy words to make it sound like something that would, how it would sound in the Bible. That's basically what Joseph Smith did. You know, and you, if you read that book, it just comes across like a two-year-old wrote it or something. Um, so they are, that's the Book of Mormon is a great example of why that will not work. Um, but I suppose if you had a, a better writer than Joseph Smith, then perhaps you could try to create a more uh, convincing forgery but there's so much more to it than that, that people are just so arrogant in, in their assumptions regarding the Bible. Um, for example, the Quran. The Quran is another great example of how they tried to forge new, uh, a new religious text to supplant the Bible. Problem with that is there's a t the only parts that sound semi-believable in the Quran uh, are the parts that are plagiarized. They're just straight up taken from the New and Old Testaments and slapped a new name on it and call it the Quran. So they tried that. It doesn't work. And for the other other elements added to the Quran um, that are new, there are so many holes in those things, you can drive a Mack truck through it. So it's not as easy as it would sound to just write a bunch of stuff and make someone believe it. The other part of this is, I'd be like saying, hey, let's just forge a new Shakespearean play. And... um pass it off that, you know, William Shakespeare wrote it, you know, I, I, I suppose that might be slightly easier um, than trying to forge uh, an addition to the Bible. But even at that, I mean, the talent it would take and the time it would take to go back and look at the, uh, the, you have to be a master of that type of English written at that time and be a playwright, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, 
I, I'm not sure if that's that's even possible to find someone who can write with the same quality as Shakespeare did. And so it's a little arrogant to even think that you can do that. But let's say someone was the f- best author in the world and they can emulate Shakespeare like it's nobody's business and they studied all the idioms and, you know, uh, you know, language styles of, of English as it was emerging at that time frame and w- was tried the best they could to come up with a forgery. Even that would be easier, as difficult as that sounds, even that would be easier or um, less difficult than it would be to try to write something that's spiritually convincing that would fool people into believing that there's a missing book from the Bible. And by and all this time of atheism, you don't think somebody's tried that? I mean, come on. I mean, just get off the arrogance pedal there for a minute. So it there's just way too much nuance and spirit in it that's that can't be faked. You can't fake spiritual enlightenment to that degree and not have someone notice the difference. So if, like I said, people have tried it, and if you if you want to go that far, and even if, like, say, for example, that you took the time to uh, learn ancient Hebrew or Aramaic or Greek from that time frame from 2,000 years ago, learned all the, the idioms and, and subtle nuance involved with that language, taken all that time and read the Bible itself so you could try to emulate you know, uh, all the writing that's already in the Bible and be able to reference said writings um, after years of research. And someone who would take all that time to do that, and then they might want to stop and think about how that's already been done and it didn't work to some degree, because no matter how authentic someone can forge writing from that time frame, um, there already is writings from that time frame that were not included in the Bible. Like, for example, the book of Enoch. Um, that is a, a authentic biblical writing from that time frame. It's not forged. It's the real thing. But even that wasn't included in the Bible. So it's, I mean, just it's so arrogant to think that you're just going to come up and write something Um, that's going to fool people into thinking it was from God. And there's this other guy named Lucifer that's trying to fool people all the time for over 2,000 years, but somehow you think you're going to do it? I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. But let's keep going, why not? Um, So then there's uh, the next one, number four. Science was written by men. Does that mean science is not valid? So all the science books don't count. I know how you guys love your science. So I suppose one can say that man did not create science and that it exists outside of us independently, whether we acknowledge its existence or not. But the same can be said about God. Then one could say, well, science is measurable. Well, the existence of God is measured in the positive changes which affects the lives of true believers. For example, the suicide rate among believers is far below that of what it is with atheists. Hmm, I wonder why. Um, So at worst, uh, scientific theories are treated as fact. So even something that's just considered a theory in science is treated as if it's fact. Um, So why would God be treated with less respect than a theory? Just a simple theory. According to Science Daily, religious participation, again, is, and this is coming from, I'm going to repeat that, this is coming from Science Daily, religious participation is linked to lower suicide rates. I'm sure I could have gone through a list of other po- more positive things associated with religion, but that just makes a simple point in and of itself. People's lives are affected when they give themselves to God. Um, in, a, in a positive way, which can't be measured in the emptiness of atheism. So my last point, number five, why is this a problem? Are you saying that men are imperfect? That seems to be what you imply, that men are imperfect and they cannot interpret the word of God or can be divinely inspired. So you're saying that mankind is fallible. If I understand right, that would be in that implication is that mankind is fallible. It's not perfect. Well, then wouldn't that imply that mankind needs the perfection of God for their salvation? And if mankind is untrustworthy, then wouldn't this apply to everything that has ever been written by men? 
and if mankind is as truly fallible of a source in what you imply, then why would I trust anything written or spoken by an atheist like you? So given that train of thought, wouldn't an atheist already lose their own argument based upon applying their own logic to themselves? Okay, that's it for today. God bless everybody in Jesus' name.